Hey everyone! A while ago I showed you how to make a fun little game using just HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Then I just focused on the technique and gave you the challenge to finalize it. Now it's time to see what you all did. I'll comment what I like and what I think can be improved, and I'll select my favorite and implement a special feature in that one. First up, it's Alexis. He was the first to send me his version, and if you look at the date, it makes no sense. It's before I even published my video. But Alexis is a channel member, and for them I post videos in advance, so that's how he knew about it beforehand. I really liked playing his version. First, it looks like just a few things are different. The design of the ball, the trail, and those green dots. I wasn't sure if I should avoid or collect them, but looking at the source code I realized they are rewards, so they increase the score a bit. This was really hard to tell by playing the game, because while playing we have to be looking here, but the score is up here, and it increases with time as well, so hard to tell what really happens. I think this could be made more clear in some way. Anyway, at some point something crazy happened. The background changed, the track became thinner and longer, and the speed increased all at the same time. I think too many things happened all at once. But I noticed it was just a coincidence. Playing again, those things didn't happen all at once. So it means the game is slightly different each time you play it. Great. It means it's more fun, has a higher replay value, and also plays a bit with our psychology. We think that if we play many times, we don't only become better, but one of these tries might be super easy just by luck. So we try again and again, waiting for that chance to get a huge score. Very nice. It's gonna be hard to beat that one. Next up, it's Daniel, whose code you can find on Discord. There are two versions. I chose to focus on this one, which shows numbers here. They count how many turns we pass, those are the points, and it also shows the speed here. The speed increases at times, but also decreases. I find this interesting. I'm used to games just increasing that until it becomes too difficult. But here you need to keep an eye on the speed at all times so it doesn't catch you by surprise. It's splitting your focus between what happens here and here, so it's a different kind of challenge. The speed changes are not too significant. They're chosen in a way that makes the game really fun to play. Try it out and you'll see that because the speed changes like that it's a completely different experience from all others, which tend to be quite similar really. I think it would be a good idea to do something with these numbers here. Maybe showing the speed like this. Since it's something I tend to look at a lot, it could look nicer, and the points, they could stay like that. Or you could implement a different strategy that takes the speed into account as well. Very unique playing experience, but so far Alexis's version is still my favorite. Sorry. Next up, it's Peter. He decided to put a different spin on things. Get it? Spin? Because the... Okay, 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 I stop it now. Anyway, this version feels smooth. I think that's the best word that characterizes it. The score is the number of successful turns, and the interface is really simple and nice. The spinning adds an extra challenge, but because the track has this clear pattern and there's no change in speed, it means you can basically play the game eyes closed. Just find the tempo and press accordingly. I can keep going as long as I want, and here I just decided to stop at 100. I think changes in speed or a more complex track would make the game far more interesting. But there's another problem. After reaching 100 I felt a bit sick. <laughs> Dizzy from all this spinning around. It might be just me, but I don't think it's a good idea to spin it around like that. But I'm not sure. Anyway, getting me sick didn't give you any extra points, so Alexis is still my favorite. Sorry. Next is Explore Infinity. His version is on GitHub and it uses modules, so you'll need to run it on a local server. You change directions by pressing space, but there's mobile support as well. This one has more features compared to everyone else, I think. The app has a splash screen and many cool things like gradients, particles and other things you'll see in a moment. The speed increases gradually and the distance is counted here in some unit. The frame rate is only there for debugging because some settings slow down the game significantly. We'll get to those in a moment, but first let's see this basic variant. The track is changing in a dynamic way. Sometimes these small stars appear that you can collect. It's similar to the rewards Alexis has, but if you pay close attention you'll see their animation. Animated. The color of the track also changes from time to time. One confusing thing is when you end, you get stars. Different stars, not those you collected while playing. 
so I would replace the in-game thing with a different symbol to avoid confusion. Then the stats here are cumulative for the entire playing session. And here we have save states for your character. You can change many properties here. It's crazy. Now, I like this one, but remember my comment from previously if you want to avoid confusion. Like if someone says I got a star, do they mean the player, the one on the track, or the one in the end screen? Some of the settings are slow, especially with blurring. I can't play the game at all like that. But otherwise, the star is really nice. It even has a small animation when turning. Great stuff, and there are even secret features, like holding shift while pressing B lets you change the background. And you can become a beta tester on the loading screen by pressing shift and C. Crazy amount of work went into this, and it's my new favorite. Sorry, Alexis. And finally, we have Hans. This one is obviously the best, because it uses my car from the self-driving car course. <laughs> That's not the reason. I like it because I see reasons for things. Like, uh, the car looks like it's on a road. That's where they usually are. The road looks nice, with houses and trees around it. Quite much attention to detail. The particles are not just for fun, or because they were there in the original. They're exhaust fumes. Really creative. And small details make it look like a polished product. There's an icon appearing here, the game has sounds, and when you crash... That cat made me laugh so hard first time I played it, and it still makes me smile when it happens. None of the other versions had this effect on me, so it is my favorite. I do have some advice, though. Collisions are not handled as expected. This is not horrible because players are usually happy when this happens, but would be horribly upset if this other thing would happen. Still, worth looking into. Then, that animation Explore Infinity has. I think it would be really great here, adding a bit more realism, especially if particles shoot off in different directions during the turn. Lastly, those rewards Alexis had could be added here too. Maybe they could be gas for the car or something, I don't know. But now your only difficulty increase is from the speed. I feel it increases too quickly, I always fail around the same time. Maybe a slower increase in speed, with some tempting rewards, could be a better experience. Now for the special feature, I'll show you how to change Hans's game, so you can play it like this. For that, we need to analyze the audio coming from the microphone. I'm also making sure the browser doesn't do too clever audio processing here. Then, this function to get the volume from the microphone is what we'll need to use here, in the animation loop. If a high enough volume happens, it will trigger the turn, or restart if the game ends, so no need to use the mouse at all. Now this alone is bad, because our sound may last more than one frame and the car turns like crazy. We need to wait a bit when listening for a new sound. These thresholds are something you may want to play with. They depend on your microphone and the environment. Let me know if you'd like a more in-depth tutorial on how to use the microphone creatively like that. Thanks to all the participants, thanks for watching and see you guys!